Section A and Section B. So we will start with our lecture discussion. Now for this morning, we will be we will be discussing all about drugs uh, that can be used for angina pectoris, or they are also known as antianginals. So let me have the introduction. Now when we talk about angina pectoris, the disease itself, this means chest pain. That is also synonymous to the term chest pain. Yeah. When you say chest pain, yung paninikip ng dibdib. Okay? But when you say chest pain na you normally encounter, we actually encounter, di ba, or experience normal na chest pain, that kind of chest pain you feel every time you are stressed, uh, that is normal, no? Pero kapag ano na siya, let's say continuous, continuous siya or persistent, tuloy-tuloy, and then biglang uh, nag-stop, and then later on, na napoy continuous nga chest pain, yun yung abnormal, abnormal nga condition, and that is already angina pectoris. Okay, and that kind of condition has to be managed. Kailangan bigyan ng intervention. It has to be corrected. And we have drugs available in the market considered as anti-anginals. They are able to relieve uneasiness sa uh, patient with this kind of condition or chest pain. Okay, so ang gap dito is we have to establish first uh, what is all about angina pectoris or how angina pectoris develop. Paano nagkakaroon ng angina pectoris yung tao? Ano yung, kumbaga, saan siya nagre-resulta? Is it sudden or there is an underlying problem first bago magkaroon ng chest pain? Saan ba yung root cause? Okay, so kindly take note that yung chest pain or angina pectoris itself, mga condition, it is not sudden, hindi siya biglaan, meron siyang underlying cause. And that is ischemia. So kindly write it. Ang ischemia or usually infarction, either of the two, this uh, results to angina pectoris. So hindi biglaan ha, yung, yung chest pain, it is a resultant cause by ischemia or infarction. And this ischemia and infarction, this is caused by CAD or what we call coronary artery disease. I, I believe you are familiar with this. You have read about this condition. So ang pinaka root cause, main cause, Bakit nagkakaroon ng chest pain yung tao, yung asakit na angina pectoris? Pinakalut ko sa again is coronary artery disease. And the coronary artery disease that results to ischemia or infarction, then later on, ultimately, it will cause chest pain. Okay, so uh, just like the usual flow, how I discussed drugs, so bago yung drugs. We have to discuss first the reasons, the conditions na nagre-resulta sa chest pain. So we will start with CAD. What is all about CAD? Ano yung mga cause ng CAD? Then second, we will discuss ischemia, infarction. And then later on, we'll discuss angina. Then after we uh, understand the pathophysiology of this condition, that's the time I will insert the drugs. Okay, so we'll start with coronary artery disease. Now this condition is also known as ischemic heart disease or ayan, coronary heart disease. So let's define it first by uh, dissecting the terms. So uh, hindi mo nakasali ha yung word nga disease. Uh, let's try to understand what is coronary artery. Okay, for you to later on understand the condition itself. 
Okay, so i-break down natin. What is coronary artery? Yes, it is an artery, a type of artery. Ugat siya. And yung classing blood vessel na to is the one that supplies blood or oxygen to cardiac cells. So can you write it? Uh, um, coronary artery, important sila because these are the blood vessels that supplies oxygenated blood to cardiac cells. Okay, di ba? You have knowledge about arteries. Ang arteries, yan yung ugat na nagde-distribute ng mga oxygenated blood to the different tissues. So kapag sinabing coronary artery, siya mismo yung ugat na nagde-deliver, nagde-distribute ng oxygenated blood, oxygen, particularly sa mga cardiac cells. So what's the uh, meaning? Ano, bakit kailangan ng uh, oxygen yung mga cardiac cells. Remember na ang puso, di ba, yung heart, normally, ginagawa ng heart, nagko-contract, nagre-relax. Nagpa-pump, nagre-relax. And the reason why it is working, it is because of the cardiac cells. Now, there are cardiac cells that comprises the heart. And of course, para makapag-function well itong mga cardiac cells, they need fuel. Ano ba yung fuel na kailangan ng mga tissues, ng mga cells sa katawan? Example, yung cardiac cells sa puso. Kailangan nila ng oxygen. Any, any tissues, di ba? Any cells. Yan yung driving force nila for them to function well. Okay? So, para efficiently makapag-function, makapag-perform yung cardiac cells, uh, they need oxygen as their fuel, or as their kumaga gasoline, yung driving force nila. And again, yung nagsusupply ng oxygen sa cardiac cells, yun yung mga coronary arteries. So yan yung importance ng coronary artery. So kung walang coronary artery, never will happen na may available oxygen no, sa cardiac cells. Okay, sige, let's try to add the word disease. So, ano naman ini-imply ng coronary artery disease? When you say disease or condition already ng coronary artery, what happens now to the blood vessels na nagsusupply ng oxygen sa cardiac cells? May problema. Diba ang disease, it's a problem, abnormality. And the problem here is obstructed. Yung coronary artery. Okay, there is obstruction. So, that's the term. Okay, that's why, uh, based on definition, it is a condition wherein there is insufficient blood flow to one or more coronary arteries. So that's the condition, uh, coronary artery disease. Okay, so for example, try to look at the figure on the left side. Ito. Diba, you are seeing a magnified portion of the heart. Kanya siya. Ito. Diba, may nakabox na portion sa heart. Isang ugat. Minagnify siya. Yan yung magnified for portion on the right side. Yan ay isang coronary artery. Minagnify lang. Okay, so sa buong heart, nagmagnify tayo ng isang ugat. Segment ng coronary artery. So, ang point dito is, pag sinabing coronary artery disease, segment lang, portion lang ng coronary artery sa heart, yung barado or obstructed. Okay, so this is an example based sa illustration. May bara, may obstruction na makikita. So, we expect na yung supply ng oxygen on that part, konti lang. Okay, so kung very uh, insufficient, insufficient yung oxygen on that area, mangyayari less efficient ngayon yung cardiac cells on that portion. Hindi functioning well, hindi nagpe-perform well yung mga cardiac cells on this portion lang no sa heart. Okay, the point ha is portion only. Barado yung coronary artery, 
na doon sa area lang no ng seg- segment lang ng heart hindi buong heart okay kasi di ba ang coronary arteries kalat yan di ba if you try to observe uh, marami maraming coronary arteries sa puso so when you say coronary artery disease region lang portion lang ng cardiac cell or portion part ng cord- coronary artery sa puso yung barado hindi lahat Kaya if you try to imagine, if all the coronary arteries na yung barado, patay na yung patient. Kaya wala na may oxygen supply sa mga cardiac cells. Okay, so I hope you understand no, the coronary artery disease nga condition. So kailangan siyang maagapan. It can be manageable naman with anti-anginals. Okay, now let's proceed to the different causes of coronary artery disease. So lahat ng to are the are listed causes that lead to deficient oxygen. Okay, not enough uh, blood meaning not enough yung oxygen being distributed not to the cardiac cells. So number one, atherosclerosis. Yep, when you say atherosclerosis, there is plaque formation. Ayan. So, there is plaque formation or kapag sinabing plaque formation, that is made up of fats. Fats na nagde-deposit, halimbawa, and let me illustrate it. Example, this is in artery. Uh, yung wall sa artery, merong nag-deposit no na uh, pamumuo ng plaque and that is made up of fats, cholesterol. Okay, so kapag merong fat deposit sa walls, sa arteries, what happens now to the diameter, yung diameter, daanan ng dugo, narrowed ngayon. Diba? So kung narrow yung coronary artery, yung daanan, that results to lesser blood flow. Okay, lesser blood flow, lesser ngayon yung oxygen supply from that area na merong plaque formation. And that would be a problem. Okay, so example, dito sa uh, right side ng illustration, sa figure, you are observing a dying muscle that is due to less blood flow on that area or less oxygen supply on that area. Pwedeng ang dahilan atherosclerosis okay my plaque formation so that could be one cause of coronary artery disease okay obstructed ngayon yung coronary artery next another cause ng CAD thrombosis also embolism this too has something to do with blood clot both involves formation of blood clot sa certain areas ng coronary artery. Yung difference lang ng dalawa, when you say thrombosis, stationary siya. At uh, thrombosis, stationary. Meaning, yung blood clot, nakadeposit lang siya sa arterial wall. Okay? Kung, kung mga nakadikit, nakadikit lang siya, stationed lang siya in one area sa wall ng artery. And yung tawag sa blood clot, kapag stationary, thrombus. That's the term. Kapag stationary ha, yung blood clot. Pag embolism naman, yes, blood clot formation then, but this one is traveling. Nagta-travel. Okay, traveling na type of blood clot. Okay, so for example, paano ba nagkakaroon ng embolism na form yung emboli or embolus? Uh, example, from this stationary, di ba ito? Example, ito yung blood clot. Blood clot ito, kanina I mentioned this is a plaque formation. So okay, this time, imagine nyo, blood clot naman ito. Okay, so nasa sa wall ng artery. Uh, pwedeng that station, stationary nga clot 
na nasa wall, pwede siyang maklived at some point, no? Maklived siya. Okay, let's say, naklive yung portion. Ito yung cleave portion. Kapag naklive yung part na yan, yung natanggal na part, yung cleave part, pwede yung mag-travel. So that is already a traveling na blood clot. So that is an example of embolism. And yung clot that will travel around the body, that is termed naman as uh, embolus. Okay, yung nag-travel na blood clot. So, embolus. Kindly take note. Embolus. Okay, so these are the uh, first three causes of coronary artery disease, atherosclerosis, plaque formation, thrombosis, embolism, it has something to do with blood clot formation. Ganun din, it obstruction, di ba, yung nangyayari, yan yung point kapag may disease na coronary artery disease or condition. It just vasospasm, constricted yung artery. That's vasospasm. So this can also lead to deficiency of oxygenation. Okay, so these are the underlying problems so coronary artery disease. And kaya yung reason uh, sa coronary artery disease, bakit less yung oxygen supply na babara, no, obstructed yung uh, mismong coronary artery. Kaya kinulang ngayon yung oxygen supply. Okay? Now, if ever barado yung coronary artery, kinulang sa oxygen supply, yung, yung mismong uh, cardiac cell, that could result to these problems. Okay? Kapag obstructed ngayon yung coronary artery, Dahil sa mga uh, causes na ito, less oxygen supply, it could result to this. It's either partial damage ng, uh, ng myocardium or completely damage yung myocardium. So one result of CAD pwedeng magkaroon ng ischemia. When you say ischemia, yun nga partial yung damaged. Okay? Partially damaged lang yung cardiac myocyte or myocardium. So kung partial lang, portion lang yung damage, uh, we could still uh, say nga somehow functioning pa rin yung uh, myocardium or yung cardiac cell functioning pa rin. Kinulang lang, kinulang lang ng oxygen supply due to decreased oxygenation. Nakalagay dito, still viable. Somehow working pa rin. Yung cardiac cell, still viable pa rin siya. Okay? Capable pa rin siya. Kumbaga, mag-function. Ang problema lang, declining. No? Declining ang iyahang performance, iyahang function. But, since partial lang yung damage, viable pa rin siya. Somehow working in the management okay, may portions pa rin nga functioning. Nagde-decline lang ha, nagde-decline yung performance niya due to decreased oxygenation of cardiac cell. Ang worst na pwedeng mangyari uh, caused by CAD, infarction. That's the worst result ng CAD. Kasi kapag infarction based sa uh, definition, totally, 100%, completely, barado na yung ugat. Okay, so 100% absent yung oxygen supply, absence of oxygenation. Okay, so pag 100%, ang ugat barado, as in kahit drop lang ng oxygenated blood, talagang walang papasok sa cardiac cell, then that will cause cell death. Kasi wala naman, totally no oxygen can enter, can be distributed on that cardiac cell. Kasi nga, completely damaged no, yung part na yan, yung coronary artery na yan sa portion ng heart. So it would really cause necrosis or cell death. So as shown in the figure on the right, you are seeing zone of infarction. 
Okay, look at the shade. If you try to compare the color, the shade of zone of infarction to zone of ischemia, mas darker, no? Darker ang color sa infarction. Okay, kasi nga, patay na. Patay na yung cell. There is cell death already. Kapag zone of ischemia, uh, medyo ganun din, pa, pa dulungay na sa dark shade. Pero, uh, function, kuan pa, uh, viable pa rin siya. Viable pa rin siya. Okay, kumbaga malapit, malapit na rin mamatay yung cell. The, based sa color, no? Sa shade ng color. Or shade or color ng figure na to sa zone. Zone of ischemia versus zone of infarction. Okay? So, again, let me reiterate to reinforce the uh, ideas kapag coronary artery disease parte lang ha, parte lang yung affected, hindi buong heart yung affected. So, pwede pa rin siyang maagapan yung pasyente, pwede pa siyang mabigyan ng proper intervention with antianginals. Okay? Sige, let's recall the pathway na diniscuss ko kanina. Ang pinaka-root cause ng nito, it's CAD. Okay, so from CAD, dahil nga barado, obstructed yung coronary artery, decreased yung oxygenation, yung nare-receive ng cardiac cell, less oxygen supply. Ano yung pwedeng mag-result due to this decreased oxygenation? Decreased oxygenation, uh, it could be infarction, di ba? pwedeng kulang sa su oxygen supply yung ma-receive ng uh, cardiac cell. So that is ischemia, kulang, meaning decreased. So that's one. And pwede din namang absent, so minus, as in negative, negative oxygen supply yung nare-receive ng cardiac cell. So that is infarction naman. Yun yung pwedeng magresulta due to CAD. Okay? Now, ang coronary artery disease, ischemia, and infarction, itong tatlo, uh, you will know na you have this already kasi you will feel or experience the symptoms firsthand. You will know if meron kang CAD, ischemia ba, or infarction. Kasi mafe-feel mo yung symptom and that is chest pain. Okay, yan yung uh, mafe-feel na symptom ng isang patient or clinical manifestation. So kapag nagkaroon ka ng chest pain na talagang persistent, continuous, then biglang nag-stop, then continuous ulit, that has underlying cause. Okay, pwede yung ischemia infarction due to CAD okay, or coronary artery disease. Okay, so again, sabi ko nga kanina, hindi uh, sudden, hindi sudden biglaan yung angina pectoris. Okay, sige. Now basically kapag sinabing angina pe pectoris, yes, you are raising your hand, sabi yun. Um, yes, ma'am. I just want to clarify, ma'am, that kanang if magka-chest pain po ba or magka-angina pectoris, it's either of the two na yeah. underlying problem niya, ma'am, or the two good? Either. Either of the two. It's either ischemia, partial da partially damaged lang, or completely damaged. Either. Yes, correct. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. But with regards to partial damage, think... Uh, that's a good question, no? good question raised by Mr. Sabio. Kapag partial damage yung cause, tapos hindi siya naagapan, it will ultimately lead to complete damage, no? completely damage yung uh, cardiac cell, absent talaga, 100% no oxygenation, kapag hindi naagapan yung ischemia in the first place. Okay? Sige. So, balik tayo in this slide. When you say angina pectoris, Ayan. So, I've mentioned earlier, it is already the end result. 
ng pagkakaroon ng CAD, ischemia, or infarction. Okay, so this is also known as chest pain. Ayan, nakalagay dito sa figure. Uh, ayan, okay. So based sa figure na to, look at the patient sa figure, sa illustration, and try to read my chest pain, pressure, or discomfort felt by the patient. Yan yung angina pectoris. Discomfort na nafe-feel ng patient due to myocardial ischemia or myocardial infarction. Okay? Now, bakit nagkakaroon ng angina pectoris? Kasi masyadong mababa yung uh, oxygen accepted by the affected cardiac cell. Okay? Sobrang mababa yung oxygen supply. Okay? That's why we can say na during angina pectoris, you can connect the concept, connected siya sa concept na mismatch of oxygen supply and oxygen demand ng heart. Okay? That is uh, the umbaga, characteristic or maybe regarded yung angina pectoris to this mismatch or kumbaga imbalance ng dalawa. Hindi balance yung oxygen supply at saka oxygen demand. Okay, so later, we'll have a separate segment, may separate slide wherein we will discuss about this uh, parang pathophysiology kumbaga ng angina pectoris. Okay. Now we have we actually have types of angina pectoris. Okay. And among the three major types, yung focus ng mga gamot that we will be discussing later on, ginagamit sila or nagta-target sila to manage to treat these two types first two types of angina pectoris. So we will not discuss the other uh, type of angina pectoris. Ito yung pinaka-common, commonly encountered. Okay? And ito din yung mga ginagamot ng mga drugs that I will be presenting later on. Okay? So we will discuss these two types of angina pectoris. First, we have CSAP. And then second, the Prince Metal Angina. Okay? So let's have first CSAP. CSAP, this is also known, a.k.a. effort angina or classic angina. Now, ang duration ng chest pain na nafe-feel ng patient usually lasts for 2 to 5 minutes. Yan yung CSAP. Okay, 2 to 5 minutes lang, lasting yung chest pain. And may mga certain triggers bakit nararamdaman ng patient yung CSAP. Pwedeng, ito yung pinaka-common kapag very... Uh, kumbaga physically exerted yung katawan ng tao ng hago kumbaga hago kaayo ang tao or emotionally stressed yung tao or exposed to cold or smoking so eto eto nga yung pinaka common example yung patient with CSAP uh, nag nag exert siya ng uh, let's say Ano ba yung pinaka-example ng physical activity? Exercise, no? Nag-exercise siya, tumatakbo, tumatalon, or any other aerobic na physical activities. At, at that moment, that could trigger chest pain. Mafe-feel ng patient yung chest, may, chest pain. Kaya nga ang tawag, di ba, effort, angina. Kapag nag-effort, naher-hurt siya, okay? Nagkakaroon siya ng chest pain. Okay? So kung kailan kumbaga, kung kailan siya nag-effort, tsaka siya ma-hurt. Parang ganun yung concept ng sisak. And another trigger nga is emotional stress. Ayan, emotionally distressed. <laughs> yes. Tendency, you feel the pain. Ganun din, cold or even smoking. This certain exertion ng effort, so di ba, puro effort ito, ginagawa ng tao. That made them feel chest pain. Yan yung CSAP. Okay? So, ang point, with effort angina, kung hindi naman nag-exert ng effort, kung baga nag-rest lang, resting state lang ang pasyente, ang tao with CSAP, hindi niya mafe-feel yung chest pain. So, kung baga, it can be relieved 
by resting. Relieved by resting. Okay, so kumbaga, kung, uh, kung pagod na pagod ka ng mag-effort, sobra ng, sobra ng sakit sa chest, <laughs> ayaw lang sa heart, no? sa chest, pwede kang magpahinga. Then you will not feel the pain anymore. So parang ganun yung sisap. Okay, so ayaw lang sa pag-effort para di ka masakitan. Okay, so that's the uh, type of angina. There is no increase in severity, in duration, and frequency for the last one to two months. So that's the concept of CSAP. Next, another type of angina, it's the Prince Metal Angina. This is synonymous to variant angina, vasospastic angina, or angina inversa. Okay, ito naman, this is because of transient spasm of localized portions of coronary arteries. Okay, so the thing here is, out of nowhere, hindi ka naman nag, uh, nag-exert ng physical activity. Pero yung coronary artery constricts. Vasospasm meaning... Uh, constriction of vessel, particularly coronary artery. Okay, so di ba kahit, uh, kumbaga out of nowhere, biglang may constriction no, sa coronary artery, due to that constriction, nafe-feel ng patient with Prince Metal Angina yung chest pain. Okay, yan yung problema sa Prince Metal, kahit at rest, even at rest, yung patient still feels the chest pain. So, parang ganun. Okay? Diba? Kung atapod siyang i-fugot na style, uh, wala, wala nga ginagawa no, yung tao, lumalayo na nga siya, nasasaktan pa rin siya. So, parang ganun. Yung Prince Metal Angina. So, may chest pain pa rin. Okay? So, that's the difference. Diba? Sobrang laki ng difference sa CSAP at saka Prince Metal Angina. Kapag effort, ito effort angina, it can be relieved by resting. Pero kapag Prince Metal angina, uh, even at rest, even at rest, uh, patient still feel chest pain. Chest pain. So yan yung Prince Metal angina. Okay. So again, basta angina, ang problem, there is uh, paninikip ng dibdib or chest pain. That is angina. Okay? Now, in, at this juncture, discuss natin clearly, bakit nagkakaroon ng effort angina? Bakit siya effort-related kapag effort angina? Bakit naman ang Prince Metal Angina at rest, meron pa rin chest pain? Okay, so let's talk about the pathophysiology. That's uh, the disease. What's the underlying cause of CSAP and variant angina or Prince Metal Angina? So basically, ang problem sa angina pectoris, I mentioned earlier, not balance, yung mismatch. Kindly write it. Yung oxygen supply, oxygen demand, that's demand. Okay, mismatch, nagkakaroon ng mismatch. Hindi balanse ang salitang supply at saka demand. Okay, so there is mismatch. Now, since always na ko ma-mention no, ang supply ng word o ang demand ng word on the preceding slides, let us first define them. When you say supply, para klaro, when when you encountered supply later on no, sa proceeding slide, this is related to the supplier, yung ugat. Ugat na nagsusupply ng oxygen sa cardiac cell. What is that? Blood vessel again. What's the name of the blood vessel? Okay, that is coronary artery. Yes. So that's coronary artery, yung supplier, yung kumbaga gasoline station ng mga cardiac cell, nagsusupply ng oxygen. And then, kapag sinabi namang um, 
demand. This is related to the tissues or the cell na sinusuplayan ng oxygen. And syempre, yun yung mga cardiac cells. Okay? So yung nagtatrabaho, yung mga cardiac cells making up the heart. So kapag demand, generally, saan ba makikita yung cardiac cells? Sa heart. Okay? So kindly take note, kapag oxygen supply, we are, or supply, we are referring to the coronary artery, yung nagsusupply mismo ng oxygen, yung oxygenated blood. Kapag demand naman, we are referring to the heart. Siyempre, ang heart yung magde-demand. Ilan ba yung kailangan niya na oxygen? So siya yung demanding dito, yung puso. Okay? So kapag, uh, yung problema again, hindi balance ha? Not balance yung dalawang to. Okay, sige, let's talk about the condition first, CSAP. Yung CSAP, um, uh, yung chest pain related sa effort. Okay, kumbaga mawawala kapag nagpapahinga yung pasyente. So let's explain, bakit ganun yung characteristics ng CSAP? Bakit when resting yung patient, hindi niya nafe-feel yung chest pain? Okay. Sige. Now, uh, sige, let's extract one trigger. Diba? One trigger, bakit uh, nagkakaroon ng chest pain yung tao na may CSAP? It's because of physical activity, physical exercise. Okay, question. Kapag ba nag-exercise yung tao, nag-exert ng effort, or let's say emotionally stress yung tao, Kumusta yung heartbeat ng patient? Is it faster? Yes or no? What do you think? Okay, yes. It is faster. No? So kapag, oh listen, tingnan ha, faster yung heartbeat. Kapag nag-pump, nag-pump ng uh, mabilisan yung puso, how will you assess the workload? Uh, sulat ko muna. Diba may effort. How will you assess then the workload ng puso Kapag at stress situation, is it more or less workload? Yung mabilisang, yes. Kapag mabilisan yung pag-pump ng heart, meaning yung workload niya uh, more or intense. Yes, correct. That's the term. Mar more yung workload ng puso. Now, kapag increase yung workload ng puso, para maging efficiently working ang heart, it needs more oxygen. Remember, ang mga nag-work out, nagpa-function para mag-pump, mag-relax yung puso. Those are the cardiac cell. I've mentioned earlier, merong fuel. Kailangan ang mga cardiac cell para mag-efficiently uh, work sila. So kung more workload ang puso ngayon, kailangan niya ng more oxygen. Tama? So more oxygen yung kailangan. So, ibig sabihin, sa CSAP, ganito yung nangyayari. Dahil sa pag-e-effort, halimbawa, exercise, no? emotional stress ng tao. Dahil sa pag-e-effort, ang puso nag-de-demand ng more oxygen. More oxygen demand. Okay? So, nag-de-demand ng more oxygen. Kaya ang tendency pag may CSAP, ang demand ng oxygen by your heart really, really increases. However, ang problem, the problem here is, kaya nga nagkakaroon ng chest pain yung patient na may CSAP dahil sa CAD, di ba? The reason, di ba, bakit may angina in the first place, may coronary artery disease yung tao. And remember, kapag CAD, what happens kapag CAD? Sobrang decrease yung oxygen supply kasi obstructed yung coronary artery. Okay, so mababa or di enough yung supply ng oxygen na dinadala doon sa coronary artery, dinadala ng coronary arteries, kaya uh, less yung oxygen supply. So sa CSAP, ang nangyayari sobrang demanding ang puso for oxygen, kaso kumusta ngayon yung coronary arteries, it cannot meet or it cannot give the demand of oxygen supply ng heart. Kaya, hindi balance. Di ba? Mismatch. Nagkakaroon ng imbalance sa oxygen supply. 
at saka yung oxygen demand ng puso. Okay? So, that's why nafe-feel ng pasyente yung chest pain. Okay? Kasi may mismatch. Okay? Sige. Now, sa CSAP, recall na ang chest pain can be relieved by resting. Okay? Kasi the reason bakit nare-relieve siya kapag resting yung patient, diba lesser effort? Lesser effort kapag nag-rest yung tao. Resting at resting state. So, lesser effort yun. Kung lesser effort sa katawan, lalo na sa heart, less workload yun sa heart. Okay? Less uh, workload. That is workload. So, kung less workload, hindi ganun ka-demanding yung puso for oxygen. So, less demanding ngayon yung oxygen. Uh, less demanding ngayon yung puso for oxygen. Kaya balance ngayon yung oxygen supply at saka oxygen demand kapag at rest, at resting state, yung pasyente na may sisap. Okay? Kasi di ba in the first place, ang tao na may sisap or even variant angina, pinaka root cause, root cause, balikan nyo, CAD, ang pinaka root cause. Ano ba yung meron sa CAD? Obstructed yung coronary artery. Kung obstructed, lesser oxygen supply. Okay? So kung nag-rest yung pasyente, lesser effort, lesser workload, less oxygen demand. Ngayon, yung gusto ng heart, somehow mababalanse. Na mababalanse yung oxygen supply na in the first place, lesser oxygen supply kapag may CSAP. And yung demand nga lesser kapag resting state. Kaya I've mentioned earlier, kayang ma-relieve ang CSAP at resting state. Okay, kaya nga may mga type of, yung mga person, ah uh, yeah, patient diagnosed with angina kapag CSAP, angina yun, ang counsel ng doktor is iwasan yung paghago-hago. Okay, yung mga uh, physical activities. Dili magpa-stress masyado. Dapat relax lang. Okay, para di ma-trigger ang chest pain. So that is CSAP. Okay, now let's proceed to Prince Metal Angina. Ang problema ulit sa <coughs> Prince Metal Angina, vasospasm. Diba? That's the word. Kung may mga kagvasospasm, may constriction of coronary arteries. Therefore, pag may vasospasm, constricted yung coronary arteries in the first place, ang problema, sobrang baba. <coughs> sobrang baba ng oxygen supply. Okay, so that's the problem kapag variant angina. And when I say... Um, kapag nagpahinga, di ba, I've mentioned, kahit nagpahinga yung pasyente or under resting state, yung pasyente with variant angina, hindi na nga demanding yung puso kasi at resting state na siya. Pero dahil may vasospasm, di ba, may vasospasm dahil may constriction, sa coronary arteries and sobrang baba, sobrang baba masyado yung oxygen supply, as in salat, salat sa oxygen supply, yung nangyayari, kahit hindi pa demanding yung puso for too much oxygen, nagkakaroon pa rin ng imbalance, imbalance pa rin, or mismatch pa rin sa oxygen supply and oxygen demand. Kaya nga, yung chest pain can still be felt by patient at resting state kapag variant angina. Kasi may vasospasm, may constriction sa coronary arteries. So sobrang-sobrang baba talaga sa lot sa oxygen supply. So somehow meron pa rin siyang imbalance. Okay? So yan yung CSAP. Again ha, kapag CSAP, sobrang demanding no sobrang taas ng demand oxygen demand kapag naman variant angina oh, let me box it 
ito talaga di ba yung problem na trigger yung sisap kapag uh, may effort no exerting effort so kumbaga ang moy ang main point dito with sisap sobrang demanding ng puso for oxygen kapag variant angina naman ang pinaka problem sobrang mababa yung oxygen supply supply ha please take note of the term magkaiba yung supply sa demand okay Yan yung problema. Si SAP ulit, sobrang taas, sobrang taas ng oxygen demand ng puso, puso. And then variant angina, sobrang baba ng oxygen supplied by coronary arteries because of vasospasm. Okay? Sige. Now, since you have learned already the problem behind these two types of angina pectoris, let us now correct, correct the problem. Diba? These are all conditions, problems, let's try to correct them with drugs. Okay, so in general, ang main objective talaga ng mga anti-anginals is to balance the mismatched, yung supply at saka demand. Okay, i-balance lang yung supply and demand. That's the main objective ng mga anti-anginals. Una, for CSAP, di ba, ang problem, ano, ang problem sa CSAP, I mentioned sa previous slide, sobrang demanding for oxygen ang puso. So, yung goal ng gamot, dapat i-decrease yung oxygen demand. Yan yung goal, to manage CSAP. So, example of drugs that could decrease oxygen demand are Yes, beta blockers. Kasi ang mga beta blockers, di ba, cardiac depressants sila. So, we'll try to recall later on sa proceeding slides yung MOA ng mga beta blockers. Another, nitro vasodilators. So, discuss natin yung MOA later. And we also have calcium channel blockers. So, may mga calcium channel blockers na cardiac acting. Kaya pwede gamitin to decrease oxygen demand. Ang mga calcium channel blockers na mentioned siya sa previous recorded lecture video, I have provided last meeting sa, na under siya sa antihypertensives na vasodilators. Okay? So, yan. And then, for variant angina, ang problem dito is, o, diba, sobrang taa, I, I mean, sobrang baba. Diba yun yung problem sa variant angina, sobrang baba ng oxygen supply. So, yung goal ng gamot, dapat uh, i-dilate ang coronary arteries. Uh, i-dilate, i-relax ang coronary arteries kasi nagkakaroon man ng vasospasm. I-correct man nato siya. I-correct natin yung constriction, i-dilate natin or i-re-relax natin yung coronary arteries Kapag, kapag Prince Metal Angina or Variant Angina. Okay, so we have the following drugs to correct an Variant Angina, vasodilators, the nitrates, nitro vasodilators, and yung mga CCBs na vasoselective. Dalawa kasi klase ng uh, CCBs. Merong cardiac acting. Yung mga cardiac acting, they could decrease the oxygen demand of the heart. Kapag vasoselective naman, they target arteries. Okay, so with these agents, we expect that they could dilate coronary arteries. Ayan. Okay, so kapag dilated, imagine nyo, di ba, relax ang coronary arteries. Uh, that, could, that could increase blood flow. Kung increase yung blood flow, increase, increase ngayon yung oxygen supply. Diba ang oxygen, sasama man yan sa dugo. Okay? So, these are the anti-anginals that we will be discussing on the preceding slides. <clears throat> Next. Okay, for the general drugs action in angina, there are drugs or agents that can decrease myocardial oxygen demand by altering the following determinants like heart rate, Ventricular volume. When I say ventricular volume, yan ay related sa amount that enters the heart, amount ng blood 
that enters the heart. Ano yung tawag doon? Yung Venus return, di ba yan yung preload? Okay? So yan yung related sa ventricular uh, volume. It decreases, kumbaga, preload. And then uh, it also alter blood pressure, of course, and the contractility of the heart. Another drug's action is there are antianginals that increases delivery of oxygen but uh, to yeah, by coronary arteries. Okay? Kasi diba, isa sa mga type ng angina is yung problema constricted yung coronary artery. Okay? Kung constricted, lesser oxygen supply. So, drugs action ng antianginals pwede may mga agents na nag-increase ng oxygen delivery delivered by coronary arteries. Okay? Sige, let us discuss the classification this time of antianginals based on this outline. So this will be the outline na pagbabasihan when discussing antianginals. So we'll start with vasodilators agents which uh, dilates blood vessels diba yan yung vasodilators specifically yung vessel na dinadilate dito specifically yung arteries and then for non vasodilators yung uh, hindi related walang effects sa ugat kasi non vasodilators only sa puso no sa heart yung kumbaga yung effect nila so examples are beta blockers, di ba? Beta blockers. Ayan. Okay, sige. Let's try to summarize the, uh, kumbaga, all about vasodilators using this uh, slide. Okay, ito. Isa-summarize ko yung tatlong vasodilators, yung mawa nila given this illustration. <coughs> Excuse me. Sige. So when we talk about vasodilators, apparently they target coronary arteries. Okay? Yung mga vasodilators, ha, nga i-discuss, they particularly target arteries. Coronary arteries. And of course, some, some concentration some concentration ng drug mapupunta sa veins. So, somehow, may effect din siya to dilate veins. Pero yung main target niya is uh, arteries. <clears throat> Sige. Now, in connection to that, we have to uh, recall this uh, illustration. If you were able to access no, the recorded lecture video I have provided last Monday, it's the same illustration na meron doon sa you are now seeing na figure or illustration. Parehas lang ito. It tells us about the mechanism of action ng vasodilators. Okay, so para hindi kayo ma-overwhelm sa... <coughs> ayan. Sa, ni, sa illustration... Let's try to divide the figure. Ayan. So, yung may, yung may kulay red. Ayan. So, i-divide na to ang kay, katong na pathway na color red versus pathway na color blue. Sige. So, on the left side, yung may kul kulay red, that has something to do with calcium channel blocker, CCBs. Okay, calcium channel blockers. And then on the right side, ito may kinalaman sa nitro vasodilators. So may nakalagay nitrates, nitrites. So mga nitro vasodilators yan. Okay, so start tayo sa CCBs. Uh, recalling the trigger calcium. I hope no, you have access the recorded lecture video about vasodilators. Ito lang din yun. I will just... Uh, uh, recall or review, review the pathway. So with the trigger calcium, na-activate ultimately yung enzyme, ah, sorry, yung enzyme na, yes, 
kinase. That is MLC myelicin chain kinase. That's an enzyme, a kinase type of enzyme. And diba, based on your knowledge of biochemistry, kapag ang enzyme kinase, it transfers a particular functional group. It transfers phosphate. Kaya tingnan yung pathway na yan. With the presence of this enzyme, tingnan ngayon yung myelicin, uh, myosin light chain, it is already phospho-related. Okay, so it causes phosphorylation of myosin light chain. And tingnan yung action, contraction. Yan yung uh, normally nangyayari with calcium ion channel. Yung L-type calcium ion channel. Kapag na-open siya, nag-open, na-activate, na-stimulate yung calcium ion channel, contraction happens. Diba? Pag may calcium, contraction. I-relate nyo lang your knowledge about calcium kapag nag, nakapasok, nag-penetrate siya sa cell membrane, may contraction. Yun na yun. Okay? Now, let's talk about CCBs, meaning blockers. Di ba? Pag may letter B na, blockers na ito ng calcium channel. Okay? So, kapag sinabing <coughs> CCBs, they are able to block the L-type calcium channels. Okay, so ibablock nila yung calcium ion channel, kaya yung mga nasa baba na pathway, hindi siya magpo-proceed, wala therefore contraction. Kaya ang mga CCBs, in short, ano ba yung opposite ng contraction? Relaxation. So vasodilator ang CCB. Vasodilator siya kasi it causes relaxation by blocking L-type calcium channel. Okay, next. So that's the MOA of CCBs. And then for nitrates and nitrites, so mga nitro vasodilators sila. Okay, so we're done here. So proceed tayo sa nitro vasodilators. Once administered in the body, ay, what happened? Ayan. So yung mga nitrovasodilators, kapag na-administer na sila, tinake ng tao yung mga prepared uh, dosages ng nitrovasodilators, ang mangyayari nito sa katawan, it will be converted to nitric oxide. Okay? Take note. Kung baga precursor, ang mga nitrates, nitrites sa katawan, Sila yung magsisilbing precursor or raw material to form nitric oxide synthet synthetically. No? Kasi galing man. Ano man siya? Exogenous drug. Okay? So, i-convert. Yung makakonvert yung nitrates, nitrites to nitric oxide. Sige, i-recall natin yung nitric oxide based sa previous recorded lecture video provided to you. Di ba kapag may nitric oxide... It activates, look at the pathway, the enzyme, oh, let me change the color, okay, the enzyme guanylyl cyclase, yung GC, that's the enzyme, na ginastimulate ni nitric oxide, yes, kapag may guanylyl cyclase, taas, CGMP, merong CGMP na mapoproduce, and di ba ang ginagawa ng CGMP, it causes de-phosphorylation. De-phosphorylation ng myosin light chain phosphate. Kaya tingnan, wala na ngayong phosphate. No? Tanggal itong phosphate ng myosin light chain. Remember, kapag wala ng phosphate, yung myosin light chain, relax ang vessels. Okay, the same thing. Ginawa ng CCBs. Diba? Hindi na buo yung phosphorylated myosin light chain sa kabilang side, yung sa red pathway, sa left side. So instead of contraction, with CCBs relax. With CCBs relax ngayon. So almost same. Iba lang yung mga involved na mga compounds sa pathway under nitro vasodilators. We have nitric oxide here. Nitric oxide, may available ngayon na CGMP, it causes dephosphorylation ng MLC, kaya relaxed ang vessel. So vasodilators din ang mga nitro, nitrates at saka nitrites. 
Okay, so we're done with the MOA of CCBs and nitrovasodilator. Sige, we'll proceed with diperidamol. Ang diperidamol is a coronary, ayan, non-nitrate siya. Yes, non-nitrate. It's also a vasodilator, coronary vasodilator din. Ano yung ginagawa niya? It inhibits phosphodiesterase. Okay, so ito, uh, ibang kulay na. Ito yung ini-inhibit niya. Halimbawa, okay, i-neglect muna itong sildenafil later. I will discuss about sildenafil. So, ang diperidamol, diperidamol. Okay. Ayan. So, yung, kumbaga, action niya, it inhibits this enzyme, phosphodiesterase. So, isa siyang phosphodiesterase inhibitor. Iyan yung mechanism of action ng diperidamol. Sige, i-insert muna natin ano ba yung action ng enzyme itself. Enzyme phosphodiesterase. Ano yung ginagawa niya? Tingnan sa pathway. Di ba sa pathway, siya yung nagme-metabolize ng CGMP based sa pathway. Kumbaga, gina-inactivate niya. <coughs> Excuse me. Yung CGMP. Inactive ngayon yung CGMP forming GMP. Siyempre, kapag inactivated ang CGMP, itong pathway na nasa baba ng CGMP hindi magpo-proceed. Kasi to the right man ang, ang process, ang reaction kapag may phosphodiesterase going to inactivation of CGMP. Okay, so walang relaxation kung baga na mangyayari if may phosphodiesterase na enzyme. So wala ha, walang relaxation. Kasi again, na inactivate man. Inactivate yung CGMP that causes later on relaxation. So yung gagawin ng dipyridamol, ibablock. Kasi inhibitor man siya ng phosphodiesterase. Ito yung gagawin niya. Ibablock niya yung phosphodiesterase enzyme. Okay? So kung wala na nga yung phosphodiesterase enzyme, taas, taas, available ngayon yung CGMP. Na? So magpo-proceed yung pathway under CGMP. So ang net result, relaxation. A relaxation ng artery. So vasodilation effect din yung ginagawa ng dipyridamol. Okay, are you following? Can you show a thumbs up if you follow the mechanism of action ng tatlong vasodilators? Okay, that's good. Sige. So this, no, based sa illustration sa figure na to, we were able to discuss the MOA. The MOA of the three vasodilators, CCBs, nit nitrates, nitrites, yung mga nitrovasodilators, at saka diperidamol. Sige. Let's proceed with beta blockers. Ito. Beta blockers. <clears throat> Ayan. Now, uh, before we discuss all about beta blockers, i-recall muna natin na yung response kapag na-activate yung beta receptor. Okay, i-recall muna natin para madali na lang yung action ng gamot na beta blocker. Okay, let's recall. Let's highlight particularly beta 1 kasi ang beta 1 receptor man, di ba, yung may related sa puso, sa heart. Yung beta 2, wala naman yan sa heart. Okay, so focusing on beta 1 receptor, let's recall, kapag na-stimulate ito, positive inotropy. Diba? Positive inotropy or chrono ay kumaga, positive inotropy, positive chronotropy. Increase yung kumbaga, myocardial contraction. Yan yung inotropy. Diba? So explain natin at ang molecular, this is molecular level no, nga, mechanism of action ng beta blocker. So kapag, okay, beta 1 receptor muna, yung receptor itself. Ang beta-1 receptor, it is a GS-linked receptor. Naalala yung KISS, 
na mnemonics. ba diba? Alpha 1, alpha 2, presynaptic. Then ang mga beta receptor, GS, na GS link. Uh, recall, ano yung GS uh, protein link na receptor? What What's the secondary messenger na napoproduce? Diba? It's CAMP. Okay, very good. Diba? CAMP level increase. And that results to, uh, later on, activation. Listen, ang kapag merong CAMP, responsible yan to activation of an enzyme. And that enzyme is the protein kinase A. Okay, protein kinase A. Okay, and protein kinase A na enzyme, tingnan yung pathway. It results to opening, opening of an ion channel. So tingnan yung ion channel, it's calcium ion channel. And then you relate everything that you have learned about calcium ion channel, yung L-type particularly. L-type calcium ion channel. Di ba kapag nag-open yan, that results to entering of a trigger calcium. Diba? Trigger calcium, tingnan yung pathway. Yung trigger cal calcium, uh, it will cause release of calcium ion from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. In short, ang net effect nito is contraction. Diba? Kapag may nakapasok, nakapasok na mga calcium ion in the cell, lalo na sa vascular smooth muscle, cardiac myocyte ito, no? so it's a muscle cell, okay? cardiac cell, may contraction na mangyayari. Ultimately, contraction. So that's what happens kapag na-stimulate yung beta-1 receptor. Stimulation ito ha, ng beta-1 receptor. Kaya nga, di ba, positive inotropy, positive chronotropy, yan yung uh, sympathetic effect kapag na-activate, activation ng beta-1 receptor. Okay? Now, let's try to uh, insert the blockers, beta blockers. Ang beta blockers, ginagawa na nila, uh, ibahin na lang yung color, ayan, ginagawa nila, they block competitively. They competitively block the binding of norepi to the beta-1 receptor. So makikipag-competensya siya with the natural norepinephrine binding to beta-1. So ang mangyayari, hindi ngayon makapag-bind si norepi sa beta-1 receptor. So kung ang beta blocker yung nagbind, beta-1 blockers yung nagbind, no more activation of beta-1 receptor. Walang CAMP, walang L-type calcium ion channel, walang trigger calcium that will enter, no, walang release dito, walang release, no, everything will not proceed no, kapag na-block yung beta-1 uh, receptor. Kaya, ang net result, instead of contraction, relax. Diba? Relaxation. Okay? So, pigil ang stimulation. Pigil ang stimulation and that is cardiac depressant effect. Cardiac depressant na effect. Kasi nga, uh, relax ngayon yung puso. Okay, so yung nakalagay dito sa outline, ang mga beta blocker, non-vasodilator. Yes, correct kasi yung action ng beta blocker is sa uh, cardiac, sa buong myocardium, di ba? Sa cardiac muscles, hindi naman sa vessels. Okay, kaya nga cardiac acting kapag beta blockers. Because beta-1 receptor is found in the heart. Diba? Ang beta-1 receptor found in the heart. So if we block beta-1 receptor, ang gamot na yan, we consider it as cardiac acting. So it's non-vasodilator. Non-vasodilator. So cardiac acting siya. Cardiac depressant in particular. Okay, so that's the general mechanism of action ng mga gamot. Okay. So we're done with the mechanism of action, but the question here, ano yung relevance? Relevance nito lahat, yung mga MOA nila to manage angina pectoris. 
So, i-relate natin this time yung mechanism of action nila na na-mention earlier, how these agents can be used to manage angina. Okay? Sige, let's begin with nitrates, yung mga nitrovasodilators. Sige. So, ang nitrovasodilators, they are also known as organic nitrite and nitrates. Okay, I have mentioned earlier na di ba nga kapag ang um, kapag na-administer, na-administer yung uh, mga nitrates, nitrites, uh, tinik ng tao, they are being converted to nitric oxide. Kumbaga, uh, they, they are precursor. No? They are raw material. Nagiging nitric oxide sila. Yung mismong structure talaga nila doon manggagaling yung nitric oxide. Okay, na po-produce, na form yung nitric oxide. Okay? Now, when there is production, no, production formation of nitric oxide, uh, that will uh, cause later on increase CGMP. Diba? Balikan niyo yung sinabi ko kanina about nitric oxide. It stimulates guanylyl cyclase, tapos merong CGMP na pa-produce, resulting later on to relax, no? relaxation or vasodilation. Okay? Unlike sodium nitroproside, okay? Ang sodium nitroproside, yung na-mention sa previous nga recorded lecture video, ang ginagawa niya, yes, may relationship din sa nitric oxide, Pero ang action niya is nag e induce ng release of nitric oxide. Kung baga, ginatrigger lang niya ang pag-release ng mga endogenous nitric oxide sa katawan natin. Ini-increase niya ba yung level ng nitric oxide? Hindi sila parehas, no? Technically, sa action ng nitrates, nitrites. Kasi ang nitrates, nitrites, kapag tinake mo siya, sila yung magiging source mismo. Source ng nitric oxide. Pero with sodium nitroproside, magkaiba naman. Hindi siya source ng nitric oxide, pero ini-increase niya yung level. No? Tinitrigger niya yung release, kung baga, ng nitric oxide sa katawan natin. Yun yung sodium nitroproside. But again, the end result is relaxation. Pag may nitric oxide, ayan, there will be CGMP. Okay, relaxation will happen. Okay? Sige. So, kindly take note of the difference. Now, uh, going back to nitrates, nitrites, yung organic nitrates, nitrites, upon intake, nagiging nitric oxide siya via the enzyme nitric oxide synthase. That's the enzyme. No? Yan yung nagkakatalyze ng reaction forming nitric oxide from organic nitrates. Okay? And nitric oxide synthase as an enzyme, it needs cofactor to be activated. And that is the sulfhydryl functional group. Okay? So it is a sulfhydryl requiring na enzyme, yung mga nitric oxide synthase. So yan yung feta ng organic nitrates yung nasa baba in which yung net effect later on relaxation, vasodilation. Okay. Ano yung relevance nito sa anginal attacks? Now, there are two possible pharmacological effects ng mga nitrates. Each effect is dose de dependent. Okay. Again, dalawa ha, yung posibleng picol effect ng mga nitrates. And each of the effect depende yan sa dose ng nitrates. Pag low dose ng nitrate, iba yung effect. Kapag high dose, ayan, iba din yung effect. Okay, so let's have first at low dose. At low dose of nitrates given, example, ayan. Balik tayo sa slide na to. And example of low doses, 5 mg sublingual administered na isosorbide dinitrate. Or another low dose ng nitrates, 0.6 mg 
sublingual ulit of nitroglycerin. Uh, by the way, ang nitroglycerin at saka isosorbi dinitrate, these are examples of nitrates. I will introduce them later, yung mga list of names ng mga nitrates. Okay, so we have that uh, specific slide. So for now, we'll focus on the pharmacological effect if given at low dose. So ang effect nito at low dose, mga nitrates, <coughs> peripheral veno dilation. So how will we relate it? Bakit siya benefic beneficial sa mga angina condition? How can it be beneficial in particular no, sa angina nga condition? Okay? Now, pag sinabing venodilation, di ba, dilated yung veins. Kapag dilated yung veins, we expect nga ang blood reservoir or yung stored nga <coughs> blood held or yeah, held by the veins increased. Okay? Kasi dilated man ang um, veins. And recall na ang veins, it's a capacitance vessel. Okay? So we're talking about veins here. And let's say for example, ha, illustrate ko. Kapag, oh, let's say, ito yung veins and then this is the heart compartment. Ito yung veins. Being a capacitance vessel, yan capacitance vessel, meron siyang ability to swell, di ba? Kaya niyang mag-hold mag ng blood, more blood. Okay? So kapag dilated ngayon yung veins, it could really hold uh, more blood. So there will be more blood reservoir. Kapag reservoir, ito yung related again sa capacitance. Kapag taas yung capacitance dahil sa dilated na veins, what will happen now to the blood returning to the heart? Kasi di ba, pag veins is going towards the heart, uh, isipin nyo ha, di ba, relaxed, venodilation man, relaxed ang veins, isipin nyo yung pressure. So ang pressure dyan sa veins kapag relax, mababa. Kasi relax man, dilated. Di ba may relationship ang ang pressure sa movement ng blood? Sige, you tell me. Kapag lesser yung pressure in that area, kumusta yung movement ng blood? Is it faster or slower? What's the relationship? Okay, it's slower. Therefore, kung dilated ngayon yung veins dito, yung blood na papasok sa heart, slower. Kung baga, controlled. Controlled yung uh, venous return. Tama, yung venous return, yung pabalik na dugo towards the heart. So, kontrolado. Lesser ngayon yung uh, preload. Tama, preload di ba yung tawag dyan? Yung pabalik na dugo sa puso. Okay? So, decrease yung preload. Lesser ngayon yung effort ng puso to welcome the incoming blood. Kasi kontrolado man. Since controlled yung papasok na dugo, yung amount ng blood towards the heart, lesser effort ngayon yung puso. Less workload yan sa puso. So, isulat ko ha. Diba? Increase yung capacitance. Again ha, yung capacitance, yun yung blood reservoir. Due to venodilation. Nag-dilate siya, may blood reservoir, kontrolado ngayon yung papasok na blood sa puso. So, kontrolado, lesser ngayon yung preload. Yung papasok na, yung pabalik ba? Yung pabalik na dugo sa heart. So, kung less preload, uh, lesser yung workload ng heart. Okay? Lesser effort ba? Lesser effort si heart mag-welcome sa mga blood. Kay pakunti-kunti man yung pabalik na blood. Now, kung lesser workload, the heart will only need lesser oxygen. Tama? Kaya lesser workload man. So lesser yung oxygen demand niya. Okay? So we can conclude na kapag venodilated, venodilation, peripheral venodilation, yung veins dilated, yung heart is not demanding. Okay, the heart is not demanding for oxygen particularly. So with low dose of nitrates, decrease yung oxygen demand ng heart. 
the cardiac myocyte will lessen its oxygen demand. Okay? And via decreasing, uh, listen, via decreasing oxygen demand, isa yan sa goal, di ba, ng gamot to relieve one type of angina. Okay, very good. The type of angina nga nire-relieve ng, ng nitrates at low dose, it's CSAP. Okay? So, that's it. So, kindly take note of that. So, via decreasing oxygen demand, yung type na uh, dine-decrease niya is the effort angina or gina-relieve niya, it's the effort angina. So, pakisulat on this slide, CSAP yung ginamanage niya. It managed or treats CSAP. So, low dose, no? Low dose ng nitrates, pwede siya for CSAP. Kasi it decreases oxygen demand. Okay? Or effort angina. Effort angina is also CSAP. So, okay, we'll finish until this slide. Kasi it's almost time. Now, ano naman yung pharmacological effect ng nitrates kapag higher doses? So, example, high dose intravenous infusion ng nitrates. Okay, so meron siyang additional nga effect. And that is arteriolar vasodilation. Okay, so it tells us nga ang coronary arteries are being relaxed. Okay, vasodilated man yung arteries daw. So relaxed yung arteries. Okay, na kapag dilated yung coronary arteries... Of course, the oxygen supply or supply of oxygenated blood being delivered by the coronary arteries increased. Okay, ayan. Increased yung oxygen supply. Bakit ulit? Kasi relax yung coronary artery. Dilated yung coronary artery. Okay. Now, via increasing oxygen supply, meron ding isang type of angina na pwede, pwede niyang ma-manage at higher dose ng nitrates. And yes, correct, that is variant angina or the prince metal angina <coughs> or prince metal angina. Kasi di ba ang problema, I highlighted it earlier, na ang problema sa prince metal angina sobrang mababa yung oxygen supply kasi may vaso spasm. So pwede yung mga gamot na nitrates at higher doses kasi meron siyang additional effect arteriolar vaso dilation increasing therefore the oxygen supply. Okay, so that's why dose dependent yung pharmacological effect ng nitrates. So again, at low dose ayan. Okay. My slide is freezing. Okay, kindly take note at low dose for CSAP at higher dose ng nitrates, Prince Metal, uh, Angina. Okay, sige. So it's already time. I will just end my lecture until this slide. Now for the remaining, ayan, konti na lang. Sobrang konti na lang yun. Let's check na to, ha. Ayan. So, we have remaining. Ah, tapos naman to na slide. Na mention na siya kanina. So, we have 2, 4, 6, 8. So, 8 slides na lang. So, I will just provide the completed. Completed na yung continuation. Konti na lang siya mga 20 minutes na lang. Then, hanggang 10.30 ramang yun ka. So, I will just give ha the recorded lecture video. Complete na siya. Mula, simula ng anti-anginals hanggang ito. End ng anti-anginals. But I have discussed already the MOAS. Diba? MOAS nito lahat. Vasodilators and non-vasodilators. So, I will let you access the completed lecture, uh, recorded lecture video about anti-anginals so that next meeting, we can discuss about heart failure already. Okay, drugs for heart failure. Para ma-finish na nato ang mga cardiovascular drugs. Okay? Sige. So, I will now dismiss the class. Thank you everyone for joining. I'll see you again virtually next meeting. Sige, thank you and God bless. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am.
Good time. Thank you, ma'am. Ma Thank you, ma'am. Bye, ma'am.